all right so i have been asked a few times by now to make a video about how to optimize websites specifically elementary websites because this is what we're focusing on here but before let's have a look at the new product that elementor has launched recently and that is the e-commerce hosting i will have the link in the description below so you can explore their product page in depth but you can see here that you can get everything you need for your online store right here so let's navigate to the e-commerce hosting plans and as you can see they launched with some serious discounts and they have three plans cell core cell pro and cell, cell pro plus even the most expensive plan in my opinion has a great deal you pay 300 euro today and it renews at 396 i mean think a little bit what it would cost you to actually have a brick and mortar store how much money you would have to pay for rent for utilities etc and i'm saying this because i know people will and have even with elementor pro say that is expensive but think a little bit broader than that think a little bit what you are getting for the money not what you are paying for the thing that's just something that i've seen as a comment here and there either on my videos other other people in the community videos and it's something that i wanted to address for some time now now that that's out of the way we can move on and while there are so many other youtubers in the space who can do this better than i can at the more granular level i am going to focus on other elements that have or are not really that discussed and are so so important that sometimes we are just skipping over because we want to take shortcuts so let's get into it all right so one thing that probably you've heard like spoken about here and there is the dome and what the dome is is something fantastical something that is ephemeral it's a unicorn <laughs> actually the dome is the website structure your website structure and it is called the document object model that's the full name of it and what we want from this dome is to be as small as possible because it makes sense right the bigger your structure the bigger your website structure the more time it needs to load and load all the event listeners everything that you have on your website right since we're doing a lot of animations here and we are adding a lot of animations to websites don't think that that is the problem for the website loading slow is because of the big dome so the big dome is causing the lagging of the interface the interface loads slow the animations load slow the interactions of the users are slowed down by all this so if you want to see how your dome is measured we usually use by we i mean web designers web developers we use use lighthouse and in lighthouse you can see the dome size it's usually the the thing in red <laughs> that is like so striking so yeah in general whatever is red in lighthouse that is that is a sign that you need fixing but let's focus on the dome here so how do we do this dome reduction in elementor because elementor has been trying and trying and trying and they're trying hard but it's taking time and people are not patient enough yes could be better but it is what it is they're working on it anyway so how we can fix these issues with a dome in elementor so there's a reason other than just designing because figma is there there's a reason why people design or design web designers start the designs in figma or any other design software okay can be even paper it doesn't matter but it helps you get the idea of the structure of the website because if you just jump in elementor for example and you don't have an idea of how uh, structure and widgets will be added to the website you will add more than you need to yeah so for example if you are in figma you can visualize and also knowing how elementor works you can think logically 
and imagine how and how many containers, for example, you would need to achieve a certain layout. But if you just jump in Elementor and you just start putting things in there, it's not, it's a recipe for disaster. To mention that you will not have design consistency and other things, but we're talking about performance here, first of all. And this is something that you can do, even as I said, on paper, even if you don't know how to use Figma, although I recommend using some sort of design software because nowadays it's needed. All right. So that is one thing that you can do right now. Let's get a little bit to even more actionable steps. So if you're still using sections and columns, please don't, please do not, do not, do not do that anymore. Switch to containers because there's a reason why Elementor has implemented containers. This is the modern way of building websites now. So try to get out of that box that you have put yourself in if you're still doing that and try to build websites in the modern way, right? Okay. This is very important. I know it's not easy to learn all these things, but as a web designer, web developer or anything these days, you need to learn to keep learning and adapt, adapt. Otherwise you will be left behind. And so will be your website because we will be slow, right? Okay. So containers streamline the HTML structure. So they use less or they reduce unnecessary elements as simple as that. And another thing I did not know this, but if you use box containers, you are adding actually two divs. So it's the parent div and the, the, the child div in a container. So a box container needs two elements while a full width container only requires one. I did not know that. Now you do. As well, and I've been using only full width containers. It's just the thing that I do, no reason whatsoever. I didn't know this before, uh, but this is something that you have to keep in mind. So, although there is an option for box containers, just use full width containers and adjust them to the size that you want. Simple as that. Let's talk a little bit about Elementor element types. If you don't know what these are, are widgets and layout elements. Layout elements are exactly what we talked about earlier, are the containers, also sections and columns, but we're not talking about those. Let's just focus on containers. So those are structural elements. What is a structural element? Basically, whatever creates a website structure, not the widgets. The widgets are not creating structures but the containers. So you put a container on the page and then you add your widgets in. Uh, widgets, we know all what they are, like uh, icons, headings, texts, images, icons, buttons. I think I said icons before, but all this, right? You know, all everything that is in the editor on the left hand side. So how do you flatten your HTML? And we're talking about the structure, the DOM and everything. Yeah. How do you flatten this? use css grid use css flex this will help reduce all the amount of, or reduce the amount of containers that you're using on the page as i said convert from sections and columns to containers this will really help reduce the dome size okay now let's talk a little bit about more technical things that elementor has implemented in the latest updates and we're talking about element caching and I have a video. I will leave the link in the description below. I have a video where I'm talking uh, a lot about this. So with element caching, you're caching static widgets, which reduces the server time by 99%, which is a lot. Also another thing that Elementor has done, and I'm talking about this in another video, I will leave the link in the description below as well, where, for example, if you have an icon box, yeah, if you don't, if you have an empty heading or uh, the detail of the text of the icon box, that is not shown in the, the structure of the DOM. It doesn't appear even in the past, even if you didn't have anything, that structure will still be in the code of Elementor. So there are things that Elementor is doing to improve performance and step by step. It's a slow process, but they're doing it. Another thing is 
lazy loaning your images so if you don't know what that is is prioritizing images in the vid visitors viewport and loading others as the users scroll so the images that you have in the viewport are loaded first and as you scroll you will see other images that are on the website so imagine if you have a blog or a heavy loaded with images website where you just leave the, the images to be loaded all at once on every page on everything on the website how crazy is that i mean that <laughs> i can't even imagine how slow that website can be right also remember to convert your images to webp this is another thing that i still see people not doing and thinking that it's okay but it's not so convert your images and lazy load them on your website so final thoughts always always uh, update to the latest version of Elementor. That is a must. Otherwise, you will not be able to use all the features they are implementing and you will wonder why you don't have access to them and why your website is still slow. Do it because it helps a lot. I really hope this helped and I hope you have gotten a different idea of what you can do with what you have without taking any shortcuts like adding plugins that are not necessary or other things that are not required so let me know if you have any other questions let me know if you have questions for elementor maybe i can get something across if it's something that is something that we have not heard before <laughs> but yeah let me know if there's anything else you would add share with everyone in the comments because it's all about performance here and design of course but also performance and we all want to know your secrets if you have any when it comes to performance of course if you'd like to see what else you can build with elementor watch this playlist here or here and if you have gotten any value out of this video please consider subscribing liking and sharing this video and i'll see you next time bye